Hi, I'm Ben Stewart, the founder and owner of Speechwire Tournament Services, and uh, I'm grateful that you're coaching. Uh, right now it's September 2020, and it's a strange time, and I'm just happy that you are continuing the activity and continuing to coach speech and debate. Uh, you're probably taking your tournaments, quote-unquote, or excuse me, taking your students, quote-unquote, uh, to uh, virtual tournaments at this point, to tournaments that might be asynchronous, where the students are uploading their performances, and then judges are watching recordings and giving points or ranks or uh, what have you. Based on those performances, they might be live synchronous tournaments where students are debating or speaking or taking part in Congress sessions on some video platform, and judges are judging them electronically based on their performances. Who knows? We might be lucky enough to be in person by the time you're watching this, uh, in which case the judges might be seeing the students in person. That would be great. Um, but we know that uh, that time might be a little ways off. Regardless, uh, you're watching this video because uh, it's an electronic tournament or a tournament with electronic balloting, and judges were putting in their comments on their computers. And now you're saying, how do I get those comments to my students? Well, I can help you. Uh, so we're going to go over what it's like to handle electronic ballots that are coming in to your team on your speechwire.com account. So here we go. This is my speechwire.com account. I'm logged into it. And the really vital part here is access your team's e-ballots. So when we go ahead and click on that, you'll see all the tournaments that your team attended this year that have released electronic ballots. So you're going to see this after the manager of the tournament goes ahead and releases the electronic ballots to the teams that attended the tournament. Uh, I'm going to say that I'm dealing with this test tournament that ran on NSDA campus. Uh, so what I can do, it had debate and speech, and I can go ahead and click on whichever one I wanna see, a PDF of all of my students' ballots. Uh, in this case, um, only one student because we're just testing. But uh, you can see here, this is a Lincoln Douglas debate ballot. Um, we've got our points, we've got our winner, and we've got the comments here. And then if I return to the e-ballot list, I can also look at the speech rounds from that tournament. Once again, because it's a test, it's just one. Um, I've got the rank, the points, the time, and the comments here. So in that way, I can see a PDF of all of my students' ballots uh, for speech debate. If there was Congress, you could do that also. Um, there are some settings here that you can customize uh, that allow you to uh, screen electronic ballots before they get to your students if you want to. Uh, by default, uh, it is set to release the e-ballots immediately when the manager releases them. So that means when the manager at the end of the tournament releases the electronic ballots, the students are going to receive them immediately and be able to see that feedback. If you want to screen it first, change that to don't release e-ballots to my students until I release them for the tournament and save setting. And now, once you change that, you're going to see a new spot open up that says release e-ballots from tournaments to your students. So in this way, once you've screened the e-ballots for a tournament, you can go ahead and release those from that tournament to your students. So in this case, I've released the results from these two tournaments to my students. And then there's another section here where you can block specific e-ballots from your students. So if you click on that, you're going to block them from the student accounts. So let's say that I was at this tournament and there was a comment made to Raul that I didn't appreciate that I don't think Raul should see. I can block that ballot from Raul. I would hope that since I am Ben Stewart that I wouldn't have made a comment like that, but nonetheless, you can go ahead and withhold that ballot if necessary. Uh, in times where everything was in person, that would be like losing the ballot, right? So this is losing an electronic ballot. That's how you'd go ahead and do that. One last note on uh, students receiving e-ballots in their student accounts. Obviously, it's very important for them to be able to get the e-ballots in their student accounts that they have student accounts. Uh, kind of goes without saying, but <laughs> maybe it doesn't. So in order to do that, you're going to set up those student accounts in the team roster. Uh, there's a whole other video that talks about creating these, but suffice it to say, the key thing is putting in email addresses for your students, whether adding them with an email address or clicking on an existing student and putting in an email address for that existing student. Uh, either way, that's going to get them an activation link, which they can then click in order to activate their student account, set a password, and that's then what they would use to be able to go in and uh, see their, their electronic ballots after tournaments conclude. 
Uh, so thanks so much for coaching. Appreciate what you do. Uh, I hope you find this to be a useful feature to get students their feedback after they compete in tournaments. Thanks so much and uh, have a great season.